Chase has a rock solid ecosystem with a ton of popular credit cards that can earn you points for both cash back and travel. But not all Chase credit cards are created equally. And so in this video, I'm going to discuss the top five best Chase credit cards for 2023 so that you know which credit cards to apply for when you apply for your next Chase credit card. Make sure you stay until the end of this video because at the end of the video, I'll discuss the number one best Chase credit card that is an absolute necessity for all of you to get right now. All right, if we hop right into the video, I'm going to gradually go up the Chase ecosystem. So I'm gonna start with some of the most popular no annual fee Chase credit cards. And so the first card that made my list is actually going to be the option between the Chase Freedom Flex and the Chase Inc. Cash. The Chase Inc. Cash is basically the business version of the Chase Freedom Flex, in which both of these cards are going to get 5% cash back for some specific spending categories despite both cards not having an annual fee. So if we start with the welcome bonuses, the Chase Freedom Flex is going to give you a welcome bonus of being able to receive $200 cash back and 5% back on grocery stores during your first year if you're able to spend $500 or more during the first three months of having the card. The Chase Inc. Cash did just recently lower its record high welcome bonus, but the Inc. Cash is still offering a super strong welcome bonus, which you're going to be able to receive $750 cash back or in other words, 75,000 Chase points if you're able to spend $6,000 or more in the first three months of having the card. The welcome bonuses for both the Chase Freedom Flex and the Chase Inc. Cash are gonna be really strong for no annual fee credit cards. And which of these welcome bonuses that you prefer really just comes down to what your own spending preferences are and how much spend that you're going to be able to put on a credit card. Next, for the point multipliers on the Chase Freedom Flex, which again is a personal credit card, this card is going to give you point multipliers of 5x back on rotating quarterly categories, 5x back on travel booked through the Chase portal, 3x back on dining, 3x back on drugstores, and then 1x back on everything else. For the point multipliers on the Chase Inc. Cash, which again is a business credit card, you'll get 5% cash back on office supply stores and internet, cable and phone services, and then 2% cash back on gas stations and restaurants, and then 1x back on everything else. So the special characteristic on the Chase Fruit and Flex is gonna be that 5% back on rotating quarterly categories, which Chase does choose, and it does rotate every single quarter, but it does typically include some really popular spending categories, like grocery stores, gas stations, and Amazon purchases. But the Chase Inc. Cash also has some 5% categories, but those categories are not rotating, they are set, as they're gonna be for office supply stores and internet, and cable and phone services. So since these categories are set, this could be better for your credit card strategy. But then again, depending on what your most common expenses are, you could make the argument that the rotating categories on the Freedom Flex are more useful. But regardless, both of these cards are great options for a high multiplier, no annual fee credit card. The next option that made my list for the top five best Chase credit cards is going to be the option between the Chase Freedom Unlimited and the Chase Inc. Unlimited. This situation is going to be very similar to the Chase Inc. Cash and Chase Freedom Flex, in which the Chase Inc. Unlimited is basically going to be the business version of the Chase Freedom Unlimited. And these welcome bonuses are going to look really familiar because the Freedom Unlimited has the same welcome bonus as the Freedom Flex, in which you'll be able to receive $200 cash back and that 5% back on grocery stores during your first year if you're able to spend $500 or more in the first three months of having the card. And then the Chase Inc. Unlimited is going to have the exact same welcome bonus as the Chase Inc. Cash, as you're going to be able to receive $750 cash back, or in other words, 75,000 Chase points, when you're able to spend $6,000 or more in the first three months of having the card. For the point multipliers on the Chase Freedom Unlimited, you're going to get similar elevated multipliers to the Freedom Flex, in which you'll get 5x back on travel booked through the Chase Travel Portal, 3x back on dining, 3x back on drug stores, plus you'll get 1.5x back on everything else. For the Chase Inc. Unlimited, the point multipliers are going to be really straightforward because you'll simply get 1.5x back on all purchases. So for both the Freedom Unlimited and the Inc. Unlimited, the reason that these cards made my list for the top Chase credit cards is because they serve as catch-all credit cards because you're gonna be able to get higher than 1% back regardless of what purchase that you make. And then which of these catch-all credit cards that you should get, again, really just comes down to your own spending preferences, which welcome bonus makes the most sense for you, and then if you're in the market for a personal or business credit card. But if you thought those no annual fee credit cards were good, then get ready for the rest of this video 
because the next three credit cards that I'm going to discuss, you could definitely make the argument that they are going to be a lot better. So the next credit card on my list is going to be the Chase Sapphire Preferred, which helps to elevate the benefits that you get on those no annual fee credit cards that I just discussed and is the best pure travel credit card on my list. Think about it like this, having just the Freedom Flex and the Freedom Unlimited without having the Sapphire Preferred is like eating peanut butter and jelly without the bread. And then the additional missing piece is the Chase Sapphire Preferred, which is the bread that completes the perfect peanut butter and jelly sandwich. So before I get into all those travel related benefits and why the Chase Sapphire Preferred makes the perfect peanut butter and jelly sandwich, I did just wanna discuss the sponsor for today's video, ExpressVPN. ExpressVPN is one of the largest VPNs in the world. And the reason that this is so important is because especially if you use the travel benefits on the Sapphire Preferred, which I will discuss in a second, then you're probably going to be going to airports pretty frequently. And airports are notorious for having unencrypted Wi-Fi networks, which means that you're sending countless pieces of personal information out into the digital world that can be intercepted and used in a malicious way by other people. But ExpressVPN puts a stop to this potentially malicious activity by rerouting 100% of your network traffic through their secure encrypted servers so that you can have peace of mind when you use your mobile devices at airports. So ExpressVPN is kindly offering the opportunity for all of my viewers to get their first three months free when you use the link that is going to be down in the description of this video. Okay, so if we get into some of the most important details on the Chase Sapphire Preferred, the Sapphire Preferred has an annual fee of $95 and is considered a mid-tier Chase credit card. The public welcome bonus offer on the Chase Sapphire Preferred is going to be the ability to earn 60,000 Chase points when you're able to spend $4,000 or more in the first three months of having the card. Typically, that welcome bonus offer is going to be worth $600 in value when you redeem those points for cash back, but you're actually going to be able to earn significantly more value because of the Chase Sapphire Preferred creating the perfect peanut butter and jelly sandwich which I will discuss more in a second. The Sapphire Preferred is also going to give you a really easy way to lower your effective fee on this card as you'll get a $50 hotel credit every single year. So if you're able to use the maximum value from that credit, then you can lower your effective fee on the Sapphire Preferred down from $95 to just $45. The Sapphire Preferred is going to give you point multipliers of 5x back on travel booked through the Chase Portal, 5x back on Lyft purchases, 3x back on dining, 3x back on online grocery store purchases, 3x back on select streaming services, 2x back on all other travel, and then 1x back on everything else. But the real value with the Chase Sapphire Preferred is going to be the Sapphire Preferred's ability to act as the essential bread in your peanut butter and jelly sandwich. And at this point, you're probably confused and probably want me to actually explain this analogy, so here it is. So as I mentioned earlier, 60,000 points is the amount of points that you would get for the welcome bonus on the Chase Sapphire Preferred, and $600 in value is the most amount of value that you would be able to get from 60,000 Chase Points if you did not have the Chase Sapphire Preferred. But here's where the bread for your peanut butter and jelly sandwich comes into play because the Chase Sapphire Preferred is going to give you the ability to earn 25% more value for any points that you redeem through the Chase Travel Portal, which would mean that those same 60,000 points are gonna actually give you $750 in value. But that's not all because the Chase Sapphire Preferred also offers you the ability to transfer out your Chase points to Chase's travel partners, which should allow you to get at least two cents per point at the very minimum in redemption value, which would mean that those same 60,000 points are gonna give you a value of $1,200. So without the bread, you're just eating peanut butter and jelly, and without the Chase Sapphire Preferred, you're just getting $600 in value, but adding in that bread completes the perfect peanut butter and jelly sandwich, and adding in the Chase Sapphire Preferred doubles the amount of value that you can get from your Chase credit card points. Now that bread doesn't necessarily have to be the Chase Sapphire Preferred, because you could also use cards like the Chase Inc. Preferred or the Chase Sapphire Reserve to increase your redemption value upside, but given the low fee and the easy ability to lower your effective fee with that hotel credit, I think the Chase Sapphire Preferred is the best option here as your go-to travel credit card. All right, next up on my list for the best Chase credit cards in 2023 is going to be the Chase Amazon Prime card. If you're like most people, you probably spend a decent amount of money on Amazon purchases every single year. And this card is what is going to allow you to get the most amount of value from those purchases. The Chase Amazon Prime card does not have an annual fee 
but the one catch is that you do need to have an Amazon Prime membership in order to get this card. But a lot of people already have an Amazon Prime membership anyways. So if you already have one, then you can basically consider the Chase Amazon Prime card a no annual fee credit card. Upon getting approved for the Chase Amazon Prime card, you're going to get a $100 Amazon gift card, but this does not have any spend requirement. So in other words, you're gonna get this gift card as soon as you are approved for this card. The point multipliers on the Chase Amazon Prime card are going to be to receive 5X back on Amazon and Whole Foods purchases, 2X back on restaurants and gas stations, and then 1X back on everything else. So basically you can get the Chase Amazon Prime card as your dedicated Amazon card to get 5% back on all Amazon purchases without needing to pay an annual fee. Finally, the last credit card that made my list for the top five best Chase credit cards is gonna be a hotel specific card, which is one of the best hotel credit cards that you can possibly get. And that card is going to be the Chase World of Hyatt card. The Chase World of Hyatt card has an annual fee of $95. And then the welcome bonus is going to give you the ability to earn 60,000 Hyatt points which is gonna be broken up a little bit differently. Basically, you'll earn 30,000 Hyatt points after you spend $3,000 or more in the first three months. And then you'll also have the ability to earn an additional 30,000 Hyatt points. And that's because you're gonna get 2X back on all purchases during the first six months of having the card. So even if we just take a look at the first part of the welcome bonus, so that first 30,000 points, while well, the points guy currently values Hyatt points at 1.7 cents per point, which would mean that those 30,000 points would give you a value of $510, which would be enough to cancel out the annual fee on the Chase World of Hyatt card during the first five years of having the card. But honestly, even though 1.7 cents per point is already a really high value, I think that you could actually get even significantly more value than this. And there are a lot of possibilities to get over three cents per point in redemption value depending on what Hyatt property that you decide to stay at. The point multipliers on the Chase World of Hyatt card are going to be for 9X back on Hyatt properties, 2X back on restaurants, airlines, transit, and gym memberships, and then 1X back on everything else. But the best aspect on the Chase World of Hyatt card, which is gonna make this card a keeper card, so in other words, the value is going to outpace the fee every single year, is that you're going to get a free night certificate for a stay at a category one through four Hyatt property. And you're gonna get that every single year just for having the card. Plus you have the opportunity to earn another free night certificate if you're able to spend $15,000 or more in one calendar year on the card. The reason that this free night certificate is so valuable is because there are a lot of Hyatt properties both domestically like the Grand Hyatt San Diego and internationally like the Hyatt Regency Tokyo that have cash rates over $300 a night meaning that you'll get $300 in value or more from this free night certificate. So if you're simply able to use that free night certificate to stay at a Hyatt property every single year, then you can basically get three times the value more than the fee every single year. So all of the credit cards that I discussed in this video are gonna be great options as the best Chase credit cards to get for 2023. But I did say at the start of the video that I'll give my number one pick for the best Chase credit card so here it is. I spent so much time talking about that peanut butter and jelly sandwich analogy for a reason, because the best Chase credit card for 2023 is gonna be the Chase Sapphire Preferred. Having those higher redemption value capabilities is simply a necessity for anyone's Chase credit card setup. And I simply think the Sapphire Preferred is a much better option than the Sapphire Reserve. But if you wanna see a full comparison on those two cards, then check out this video next. Thank you all so much for watching this video. And I hope you all have a great rest of your day. Peace.